Do you ever get busy crocheting on a striped project only to realize that you have this big janky area where you switched colors that just looks really weird and not at all what you had imagined? Well, in this week's tutorial, I am going to show you how to create jogless stripes that have a very clean seam and very clean uh, switchovers between colors and show you step by step how to create the perfect stripe for your next project. So let's dig right in. Grab your hook and yarn. I'm Lavina Perry. This is Solo Stitching. Let's stitch. So I have just created basically a tube for this uh, tutorial. So the stripes that I'm going to show you are for when you are crocheting in the round so that you can create a very clean uh, transition to a new color. And what I mean by transition is if you'll look here, you can see the two colors are kind of mixed together in the same stitch and it leaves almost like these little polka dots. And then up here, it's kind of uh, jagged looking. And then when you get to where you uh, changed colors, you have these big, they're called jogs in the crochet world, but basically it's a, an area where it's a very apparent exactly where you changed colors uh, for your project. So to avoid that, there are a few different techniques available, and I'm gonna show you how to create a very clean line uh, for your color changes, as well as how to change without having the jogs in your fabric. So for this, I'm using a size G four millimeter crochet hook and a medium weight yarn. And I've already crocheted eight rows of my color one. And now I'm gonna show you how to switch colors. The first thing that we need to do is we need to finish off this stitch that we have here, but we don't want to just do another chain stitch. We actually want to be able to bring this sort of a lower so you can see how this stitch rises up right above this row, which makes sense. That's how we make it longer. But to do the jogless stripe, we actually just want to bring this down and kind of lower it and make that gap between this row and this row a little smaller. And we're going to finish this off by doing a stitch in kind of a different way. So take your hook out of your yarn and then you're going to insert your hook from back to front through the next uh, stitch and you kind of want this loop to be a little bit longer it doesn't need to be crazy but a little bit longer so that we can sort of pull it around so once you have your hook back to front through the next stitch you're going to take your loop and you're going to put it over your hook and then you're going to grab the yarn and pull it through the stitch. And mine got kind, of, kind of separated, so I'm just gonna help that out there. So that's what it will look like at this step. There you go. Okay, and then we're gonna take our yarn, and this part people get confused about, and it's really quite uh, simple. So once you have pulled the loop, from front to back through the next stitch and you're holding it, you're just gonna take your yarn and you're gonna put it across like that. So it'll be in front of your stitch, but it'll be on the correct side. So if you're crocheting right-handed, the yarn will be on the left. And obviously if you're doing this for left-handed crocheting, your hook will be in your left hand and the yarn will be on your right so that you can move forward. Okay, so now our next step, we want to do a slip stitch through that stitch. So I'll show you again. So we've pulled our yarn in front of that stitch, okay? And we're gonna insert our hook through the same stitch front to back and pull up a loop 
and do a slip stitch. Okay, and that is going to be our starting place for the stripes. And if you look at how the stripes look, you're coming along, row, 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 and then we actually took the top of the stitch and we brought it down level with the row below by doing that. Okay, so now we're going to switch colors. And there's like so many different ways that you can do color changes and my advice is just to find one that works for you. Um, this one, I like it because it gives the yarn a stopping point. So it'll actually like stick on the knot. So what you're going to do is you're going to just put a slip stitch in your new yarn. So once you have a slip stitch, then you are going to just place it over your hook. And then you're just going to pull it down so it's an appropriate size. And then we're going to pull that through this loop here. And that just gives us a little starting place. Okay, so now we are going to single crochet into this same stitch, but we are going to be doing the bottom of the stitch in this color. And we're going to be doing the top of the stitch in this color so that we have a very clean line. So to do that, we're going to be working with both strands of yarn. Okay? So we're going to, once we've inserted into the loop, we're going to pull up a loop with color one, and then we're going to yarn over with color two and pull through to complete the single crochet. And I'm just going to tighten all of this down since that was our first stitch that gets a little crazy. Okay. So again, make sure I have the right strand here. And I'm just going to tuck this strand inside so that it's out of my way. And you could crochet over that or tie it in however you want, or wait till the end, that's fine. But for right now, I'm just going to scoot that little tail out of the way. All right, so this is how I have mine. I have seen people where they will twist it after every stitch. That's fine. You can um, do that if you want. For this, I am just going to hold both strands. Uh, if you're going to twist it, then you're just going to give it a twist, pull it, pull up your loop, give it a twist, and then pull through. So that every time you switch strands, there's a twist in your yarn. That is uh, more complicated than what I'm going to show you. So I just hold both strands of yarn. And then you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch and you're going to pull up a loop with the bottom color. So by bottom color, I mean that we are forming two parts of a stitch. The base of the stitch is going to be the bottom color. The top loops of the stitch are going to be a different color. So that's going to be our top color. Okay, so you can also know that this is your bottom color. This is your top color. And then I'm going to show you what this looks like. But for now, just know that the existing color that you've been working is the bottom color. Your new color is the top color. Okay, so I've pulled up a loop with the bottom color and I'm going to yarn over and pull through with the top color. Okay, well let's do that one more time. We'll work a couple of these and then I'll show you what we are forming with this. So insert through the next stitch and then pull up a loop with the bottom color, yarn over, and whoop, and that happens. So I have my loop from the bottom color, yarn over, and pull through with the top color. Let's do that two more times. Pull up a loop with the bottom color, yarn over, and pull through 
with the top color. Insert hook, pull up the loop, and then pull through. Okay, so now we can see what we are creating is if we look at the row that we're working on, the bottom of the stitch, the post or the body of the stitch is the same color that we've been working, but the two top loops that form that V that we call a stitch when we are working through, right? Those are in the new color and it creates this very clean line for your next color. So there's, n so if you can see the difference here, see how you can see color one and color two are kind of enmeshed with each other and there's not really a good clean line between the two colors. Whereas if we look at this, you can see there's no bleed over in between the two rows. So that is what we are creating here by working with both of the colors and two strands of yarn. This is not essential. You can do a jogless stripe without doing this. Um, however, part of the reason that we do a jogless stripe is because we want a clean line. If, if the whole of the stripe is going to be visible for our project, then we want to have a nice clean line and this method creates that clean line. However, if you don't want to do, if you're not interested in, if, you, if this doesn't bother you at all, you can totally skip this step and just move on to the next one. Let's continue working around uh, with our two strands of yarn. So we're gonna insert into the next stitch. We're gonna pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. And we're just gonna do that all the way around. And I'm just gonna let you watch for a few stitches. And it's not that this technique is difficult as much as it's just a matter of trying to hang on to all of the moving parts and figuring out how to hold your yarn and how to hold your project and how to keep the right tension. And so once you get that part figured out, you're good to go. So I'm just going to finish up this round. And if you're interested in making exactly the same size as me, I did 20 uh, chains and then I just slip stitched to join them and started stitching. So once we are back to the beginning, we're going to start doing uh, stitches around that are just regular single crochets using just one color. So I'm going to go ahead and join with a slip stitch because I want this to be very flat across. So rather than just going right into a crochet, uh, from my last stitch, which is here, I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch and just do a slip stitch. And I'm going to make sure that I pull that over so that we're creating that very nice straight line. And now we have a solid gray base to work from uh, that is not uh, intermingled with the color from the row below. We have our slip stitch done. I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to single crochet into that same stitch and I'm going to start working a single crochet in each stitch around. I'm 
making sure to work through those two loops of our new color that we created from the last row. And once you get back to the beginning of the row, you're going to just continue crocheting around. So you're just going to insert your hook into that first stitch. And you're going to want to make sure that this is pulled up. Otherwise you will have, so you can see that gap that you have in there. We don't want that. We don't want that gap to be there. So I'm, I like to just adjust that. So it kind of sucks those two stitches together and then do my single crochet and just continue stitching around. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a couple of rows and then show you how to close this off and switch back so that you can see the top of the stripe. So I'm at the end of the row again and as you can see we are just going to continue stitching on without stopping. We're not going to do anything special here. We are just going to work this smoothly as if it was a continuation of the row. So we are back to the beginning of our stripe and we're going to be switching back to our original color. So we're going to go through that same process that we went through. So we're going to take our hook out and we're going to give our loop just a little extra space and then we're going to go into the next stitch. We're going to loop that over our hook and we're going to pull it through from the front to the back and then we're going to take this yarn and we're going to put it around the front of the stitch before we Enter that same stitch front to back, pull up a loop, and do a slip stitch just like that. So we can see that our stripe here, let me even out my tube that I made. You can see that it is nearly perfect like the one that we had down here and you don't have this big visible gap for your stripes. And to keep going, what we would do is just go through that same process with the lighter colored yarn and I'm just gonna pull that up and do a chain stitch. And then this time when I pull up, oops, we want to be working in that same stitch for a moment. So into the same stitch and I'm going to pull up the same color that I've been working with. And then when I yarn over and pull through with the new color, and that's going to get us started on that transition row where we have the body of the stitch in the current color and the top of the stitch in the new color. So insert, pull up the, uh, the color that we've been using, yarn over, pull through with the new color. And repeat that all the way around. And you don't want these uh, loops to be too tight. That's what causes uh, well, two things. It causes this to pull in, but it also makes it hard for you to get into your stitches when you're working around with your new color. And sometimes that is easier said than done, but it's just a matter of, of practicing. Thank you. 
And once we get back to the beginning, we are going to slip stitch into the first stitch. and chain stitch and then single crochet into that first stitch and start working around single crocheting in each of those stitches and like I was telling you like it's uh, getting these the tops of the stitches to be the right tension uh, I'm sure with time and practice you could probably perfect it but it's difficult to get it to get it perfect, especially when you're working with those two strands of yarn. So I just do my best and I realize that I don't need perfection. I just need it to be good enough. And it will look, it will look great um, as we're done with it anyway, even if these top uh, stitches are a little bit tighter than I would like. It's all part of the process of learning and mastering crochet. And that's the last stitch on our two part row. And then we are going to just go ahead and continue crocheting around. Again, that first stitch, I'm just gonna make sure that it's pulled up nice and tight and then continue crocheting around. And that is it. That is how you do a very clean jogless stripe with very um, nice smooth edges and transitions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and drop down into the comments and let me know. I'll do my best to answer them for you and I will also have a link to the ultimate guide to crochet for your mental health. You can grab that free downloadable PDF and learn all about how to turn your crochet hobby into a tool for your mental and emotional health. Because crochet is not just fun, it's a good for you. So until next time, happy stitching. <laughs>